right, let's start with obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. All together. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands, doing it happily. Action is the key, do it immediately. Joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. You ready to spell it? O B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Very good. Let's sing. I have to see the order I picked them in. Let's sing our song we're learning. I am the resurrection and the life. I'll just take one second. We, I'm enjoying having the piano. Aren't you glad to have the piano to sing? It helps me to get started on the right note. Ready? I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, yet shall he live, and Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never, never die. If you were listening carefully tonight at the beginning of our service, I talked about two people who have died. They went home to be with the Lord. Now they were both older. They were believers in Jesus and they are right now in Jesus' presence. And they will never, ever, ever die. Isn't that wonderful? There is a live as anyone ever could be in the joy of the Lord. Let's sing I am the resurrection and the life together one more time. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never, never die. Good, you guys are doing a good job learning that one. Do you remember, be ye kind to one another? Let's sing, be ye kind to one another. Be ye kind to one another, be tender-hearted too. Be kind to one another in everything you do. Just follow Christ's example, be loving, kind, and true. Forgiving one another as God has forgiven you. Good job. we got to work on that one a little bit more together. You guys can have a seat tonight. I want to read to you from Matthew chapter 6, God's holy word, Matthew chapter 6. And the Lord Jesus said, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Jesus was talking about clothes. Jesus said, you don't have to worry about food and drink, and you don't have to worry about clothes. Jesus said, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? God is saying, Jesus is saying to us that our spiritual needs are much more important than our physical needs. And we do have physical needs. We need something to eat. I got a good, delicious dinner today. Did you get something to eat today? Yum, yum. I was thankful and I, I have clothes to wear and I'm so very thankful to the Lord to have nice clothes to wear. And God provides all of those good gifts, but God wants us to know that our spiritual needs are much, much more important. We have a sin problem, don't we? We're all born as sinners. We are born with a sin problem and Jesus died on the cross to provide for that need, didn't he? He shed his blood to pay for our sins. And God has given us his word so that we can fill our hearts with truth. It feeds us spiritually. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, look at the birds of the air. 
But they neither sow, which is to plant seeds like a farmer. They don't plant seeds, nor reap. They don't gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Did you hear Jesus' question? Do you think you're more valuable to God than the birds are? Jesus is saying you are. Did you know that? Can you think of different kinds of birds? Do you know of any different kinds of birds? Sparrows, that's good. An owl, very good. Eliana? Parrot, peacock, very good. Wait a second, Jonas? Blue jay, what did you have, Yvonne? Doves, that's right. What do you think? Oops, Cherith. What's that? A robin. One second. Yeah, I will come to you. A red-breasted robin. Very good. Silas. A blue jay. Right. Very good. There's all kinds of birds. Did you think of another one? Yep, that's what Cherith said. The robin. You thought of another one? A hawk. I saw a hawk on the way to church tonight. Yep, a hawk. What, did you think of one, Elia? A bald eagle. Cherith? Seagulls. What did you think of, Jonas? You got the seagull too. Same in your mind. I was thinking of the cardinal. Do you know what color the cardinal is? What's that? Red. Red. Very good. Right. Well, Jesus said all of these birds that God made, and he made many different kinds of birds. There's even more than we talked about. Pink flamingos and all kinds of birds. But Jesus, you are of more value. If God feeds the birds, God said he will feed you too. Listen to what Jesus said. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Can you make yourself taller? Can you go, I want to be six feet tall? Will that work? No. You guys are all growing, though, aren't you? You are growing. God is causing your bodies to grow every day. But you don't do that. That's a work of God in your life. You need food to eat so you can get strong and grow. But Jesus said, why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. Jesus said, they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Now, when Jesus said toil nor spin, I don't know if you've ever seen a spinning wheel, but they don't toil or spin. They don't make their clothing, the lilies. I brought some flowers with me tonight. I want to show you and uh, see if you know the different kinds of flowers that I brought. These flowers that I brought tonight are special because they're from Mrs. Perrant's flower garden. So I brought a couple. And Jesus said, consider the lilies of the field. So I brought a lily with me. What color is this lily? Pinkish, purple, right. It's right in between those two colors, right in between. It's pretty, isn't it? It's called a stargazer lily. Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful, isn't it? And uh, let me see. I have another flower. What color? I don't know if you guys know the name of this flower. I have to be careful if I pull it out. The others might come out. What color is that one? Yeah. Nope, it's not a daisy. That's a good guess. It's called Coreopsis. Chore and this one grows like crazy. I mean, it just grows. It goes wild. All right, so what kind of flower do you think this one is? You're right, Cherith, that is. It's called a Shasta daisy. I hope it's called a Shasta daisy. I think that's what it is. And it's got two colors, doesn't it? It's got yellow in the center and white. Right, white, very good. And that's right, green on the stem and the leaf. Would you say that that flower is beautiful? Who created that flower? God, does he create beautiful flowers? I still have a couple more in here. Do you know what this one's called? Did you, Elia? Nope, it's not a daffodil. This is another kind of daisy. It is pink. That is pink. It's, it's called a Gerbera daisy. That's another kind. So... If you look at these two closely, I'll show them up to the camera. They're not, not seeing a lot of this. But these two have very similarities, and yet they're different. One is white and has a yellow center. The other is pink. I only have one more flower that I brought with me today to show you. And it's not a rose. That's a good guess, though. It is kind of pinkish red. Do you think you know what it is? It's not a rose. I guess it looks almost like a rose, but it's different. You're right, it is a red one. 
I, I'm told this is a zinnia. That's what I'm told, that that's a zinnia. Isn't that an interesting name for a flower? Aren't there lots of different kinds of flowers? And God made all these flowers. And you know what Jesus said? God puts all these flowers in the field. And you know what's sad about these flowers? They're so beautiful. That's what's happy about them. What's sad is in a couple days, they'll all die. Flowers don't last too long. They grow and then they die. And then new ones grow and then they die. And Jesus said, if God clothes the grass of the field with these beautiful flowers, God it wants you and me to know something. God says he will take care of you. God will provide food for you. God will provide clothes for you. Do you know that God loves to take care of his children? Did you know that? And the birds and the flowers are to show you that God will take care of you. He will take care of your needs. So that's right, it is a flower. So listen to what Jesus said at the end of this little section. Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When Jesus said all these things, he meant food and clothing, where am I going to live, what will I have to take care of my needs. Jesus said, God's going to take care of your needs. Remember the flowers. Remember the birds. If God feeds the birds, will God feed you? He will if you look to him and trust in him. And if God puts flowers in the field, will God give you clothes to wear? He will if you look to him and trust in him because God takes care of you. But what does God want you to be concerned about? He said, seek first the kingdom of God. God wants you to think about heaven, our home. God wants you to think about God who's in heaven and to be looking to him. And when you look at the flowers, when you look at the birds, you have something that's telling you trust in God. God, he's going to take care of you. Now, Jesus said one more thing about these flowers. He said, King Solomon in all of his glory was not as beautifully arrayed as these flowers. Did you know that? Do you know that Solomon, King Solomon of Israel, who had great wealth, he was a mighty man with great wisdom from God, and yet Jesus said, the flowers of the field are even more beautiful than all of Solomon's glory. And Jesus said, when you see the flowers of the field, what does God want you to know? God is going to take care of you. Can you remember that? God will take care of you. Do you guys know the chorus, but seek ye first the kingdom of God? If you don't, we're going to learn it. You can stand up for the adults. It's in your Rejoice hymnal, number 411. Go ahead and stand up. It goes like this. I'll sing it for you, and then you join with me, okay? If you know it, join in singing with me. But it goes like this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Allelu, alleluia. Now we're going to sing it together, but let me ask you a quick, quick question. Do you know what alleluia means? Do you know what it means? That's another way of saying alleluia, hallelujah. It's the same word. It means praise the Lord. That's what hallelujah means. It means praise the Lord. So when you sing alleluia, Alleluia. What you're really singing is, praise the Lord. Let's try it all together, all right? All together. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Allelu, alleluia. And remember, when you see the flowers and when you see the birds, God will take care of you. You can go sit with mom and dad and with Meme and Pepe. Good job.